Whenever I make these reviews, I have to play through as much of the game as I can so I can give you the best coverage. Because of this, I prefer to review simpler, arcade-style games since I won't have to record as much footage and the video won't take as long to make. I've been thinking of a game of this type to review for about three months now, but I think I've found one. Congo Bongo, or more specifically, the version for Sega's SG-1000. You may think that this game is just a simple port of the 1983 arcade classic, but Sega actually took some liberties when bringing it to their first home console. As always, I'd like to provide some context before we begin. In 1981, Nintendo released an arcade game called Donkey Kong, in which a carpenter tries to save his girlfriend from his pet ape. The game was very revolutionary for being one of the first platformers. A year later, in 1982, Nintendo's rival Sega released an arcade game called Zaxxon. It was a shooting game which was also very revolutionary for being the very first video game with an isometric three-dimensional perspective. Another year later, in 1983, Sega looked at Donkey Kong and decided to combine it with the isometrics they introduced in Zaxxon and put out a quirky little arcade game called Tip Top, later to be renamed Congo Bongo when they released it in the United States. The game was fairly popular in arcades, so many home ports were made for systems like the ColecoVision, Intellivision, and even the Atari 2600. And of course, there's the SG-1000 version, published in Japan, Taiwan, France, Australia, and New Zealand. Now, like in my Kart Fighter review, I don't have the original cartridge for the game. Hell, I don't even have an SG-1000 console. Luckily, I can play SG-1000 ROMs thanks to the use of Genesis Plus GX, another great emulator for the Nintendo Wii. I would get a real SG-1000 if I could, but... Yeah. Anyway, let's fire up the Wii and open up the emulator to review... What the hell? ATI? ATI, my ass! The instruction manual opens by saying, This cartoon pursuit game features a HUNTER! Sorry about that. He climbs up cliffs, jumps over gorges and waterfalls, and finally catches the mischievous gorilla while evading falling coconuts and dangerous animals. Wait, why is all this happening? The arcade version had an opening cutscene explaining why. The gorilla one day decides it would be a fun idea to set the HUNTER's foot on fire while he sleeps as a silly prank. Kids, this was before YouTube was invented. This eventually leads to the HUNTER chasing the gorilla through the jungle until he finally gets his revenge using the same prank. This little plot was actually referenced in the 2006 arcade rom hack Donkey Kong 2 where Mario is shown doing the exact same thing to Donkey Kong in a cutscene. When it comes to the SG-1000 version, however, neither the game nor the instruction manual have any explanation as to what's going on. Anyway, the arcade version consisted of levels with four parts, three of which involved climbing a mountain while avoiding coconuts thrown by the gorilla and pesky monkeys who cling onto the HUNTER unless you jump constantly to shake them off, crossing over logs while avoiding snakes, and hopping across leap pads, yes leap pads, and hippos while avoiding fish. The SG-1000 version is composed of rounds, with two parts in each round. The first part is based off the mountain part, while the second part is a combination of the snake and leap pad parts. You may have noticed that while the arcade version uses an isometric perspective a la Zaxxon, the SG-1000 version uses a more head-on perspective. Which is not to say that the other home ports didn't do this, because as far as I know, every single home port of Congo Bongo used the isometric perspective. Frickin' Atari 2600 version attempted this perspective, which is kinda ballsy. But I appreciate the fact that Sega chose to use the more head-on perspective, because it doesn't overcomplicate the gameplay for such primitive hardware and makes the possibility for fun much higher. The graphics in the SG-1000 version are okay. They're fairly well detailed and they aren't really any sort of hindrance, which is something you never want the graphics in your game to ever be. Though I can't go on without mentioning the coconuts and the leap pads. 
The leap pads aren't even green. When I first played this, I thought they were supposed to be rocks, even though they're shaped like leap pads. And the coconuts are super small and black, making them look more like black racquetballs rather than coconuts. Speaking of which, the coconuts in the arcade version killed you in one hit. These coconuts don't kill you. In fact, they just drop you down to the level below you, which is a nice touch. The music is not bad either. The title screen music has a funky beat. The main tracks used during the rounds are pretty good. And the level clear and death music surprisingly sound almost like the arcade versions. I mean, take a listen. Pretty bitchin'. Lastly, the controls are pretty responsive. The jumping is pretty interesting because when you jump, the HUNTER travels in a weird arc. It's a little hard for me to explain, but you can see what I mean in the video. All I can say is that it's pretty similar to the jumping in the MS-DOS version of Donkey Kong. I also have to mention that when you're standing on those leap pad rock things, you can push the control pad in any direction and you won't fall off. The HUNTER will actually walk in place and you'll get points for doing so. Pretty cool! Overall, the controls do what they're supposed to. The only real complaint I have with this version of Congo Bongo is that it feels a little too short. You can get through each round in such a short time that it feels limited in what the game has to offer. This isn't all that bad though, because the challenge is still there, so the game can still be enjoyed, albeit a few minutes at a time. So what do I think of Congo Bongo for the SG-1000? Well, it's a fun little romp and a very impressive game for what it tried to do. I appreciate it for changing up the formula and making it more of its own game rather than a straight up port of the arcade version. While the game may feel too short, it's definitely still fun in short spurts and definitely something you have to check out if you haven't already. So Congo Bongo for the SG-1000 gets an approval from me. Thank you everyone for watching, I am Andrew Ambrose and I'll catch you later.